Welcome to Demon's Souls. I'm sure everyone is aware, but there's two different versions of this game. The original PlayStation 3 game from 2009, and the PlayStation 5 game from 2020. In this case, I'm playing the good one. As with basically every game in the series except Dark Souls 1, every class can reach the maximum level of 712, but for this challenge, we're going to start as the Temple Knight. The reason for this will become clear later, but for now, let's step through the light. First thing is first. Similar to Dark Souls 2, this challenge is impossible. Well, not exactly. Rather, doing it in the area named Tutorial in Demon's Souls is impossible, since you can't actually have the enemies respawn here. If you kill an enemy and reload, you'll get the opening cutscene again, which seems promising. However, when you actually reach gameplay again, you'll find that the enemies you've killed are still dead. On top of that, it's impossible to die in the tutorial prior to the Vanguard boss fight, as your health will just stay locked at 1. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that you did manage to die though. Thanks to Demon Souls modder Aria, we can see what would happen. As you can see, upon death you get the You Died message, but then you're instantly set back to the starting spawn location, but there's no loading screen or anything. You also get a dialogue box holding an error text, but upon moving back to the location of the enemy, you'll find that he's still dead. This is all in the first half of the tutorial, though. What if you continued after the Archstone? It's still typically impossible to die here. However, if you were to force a death again, it would just send you to the Nexus as if you had already fought the Vanguard. As a result of all of this, our cutoff has to move forward into the Boletarian Palace, which is essentially just a continuation of the tutorial part of the game anyway. If you disagree with this, that's okay, but as with the Dark Souls 3 video, I don't know how people will feel about this, but I do know that I don't care. Going back to our main character, we do want to kill the Vanguard. Continuing into the Dragon God encounter, we'll find multiple items, one of which is three shards of hardstone. We can also pick up some souls, and then attempt to start our bare knuckle boxing career. As of right now, there's nothing to do in the Nexus, so we'll go straight into the Boletarian Palace. There isn't much special to say at this point in the run, it's mostly standard gameplay. In previous max level videos, I was avoiding collecting souls until we got to the grind. That is not the case here. The challenge this time around is a totally different beast than the others, at least in terms of setup. So really, at this time, whatever you want to do to maximize your souls early on is in your best interest. With that said, the souls you're able to collect early on is going to vary wildly depending on a number of factors, so it's kind of impossible to standardize it in the way that I was able to with previous videos. All this is to say, as long as you kill pretty much everything you come across and don't lose your bloodstain along the way, you'll likely be fine. Let's go up the stairs and towards the mausoleum. Here we can fight the Red-Eyed Knight. Later. Uh, um, for now, we'll go ahead and open the shortcut. As expected, we'll drop the chains holding what are ostensibly stockpile Thomas's family, get the cling ring, and pick up the old raggedy set. These are very important items for different reasons. The cling ring makes it so that your HP only drops by 25% rather than 50% while in soul form, which is going to be very useful. On the other hand, the old ragged gloves make my character look cute. So, you know, equally important items. Going back up the shortcut, we'll find our way over to Ostrava. Ostrava has gotten himself into a bit of a pickle being surrounded by dreglings. Luckily, we're here to make it worse for him. Push him into the fire for an easy kill. Now be very, very careful collecting the items. If you're not, you might accidentally... Die. In which case, the items are lost forever. Thank god I backed up my saves. Okay, there we go, we got the mausoleum key. Continuing on, we'll come upon two dragons resting on a perch. In case you're wondering, no, it isn't possible to kill them here. You can damage them, sure, but when you get close to actually killing them, they'll eventually fly away. 
here's the red dragon doing so. And now the blue. This is pretty unusual for From Software. They'll typically let you do this kind of thing if you have the patience for it, but not this time. Anyway, pull the lever to reveal the fog gate and kill Phalanx to return to human form. Now we'll go back to the mausoleum. Kill the red eyed knight, yeah, he's not actually that hard, I was messing around, and use the mausoleum key to unlock the. well, the mausoleum, duh. Here, we're going to challenge Old King Doran. A really easy cheese is to draw him back across the bridge and bait him to attack near the entrance of this room. He'll start trying to path back to the mausoleum, but you can simply push him. Keep pushing him all the way back to the shortcut and knock him down the tower. Doing so grants you the Eternal Warrior's Ring, which is essentially the Claranthi Ring of Demon Souls. You'll definitely want to equip this. The Maiden in Black tells us to go upstairs, so let's do just that. Near the Monumental, we can find a Stone of Ephemeral Eyes on a corpse. That's not quite good enough, though. Next, we'll go to the very top of the stairs to the Pantheon, which is behind a locked door. Oh, right. They shut down the servers back in February of 2018, making the Pantheon inaccessible. I was relying on getting these items, so this is basically over. Or so one might think. Luckily, I'm friends with Demon Souls modder and all-around awesome person, Arya, who is working on a mod to restore the broken archstone. Be sure to check her out. I know that people might have a problem with this, but I'll argue three points. The first is that it really, really sucks that there's game content made inaccessible due to the servers being shut down. The second is that, actually, as of right now, there's a Demon Souls server emulator that can be used to access this anyway, even on an unmodified PlayStation 3 or emulator. Links to that in the description. Finally, this content is still accessible on the Demon Souls remake on PlayStation 5. Thanks to Illusory Wall for this footage. So, for the sake of parity between versions, I'm totally fine with doing this. And if you're not, well... But I don't care. Back down to the bottom, we're going to talk to the Maiden in Black and level up. We need 20 faith, and yeah, don't worry, I'm keeping track. We've already spent 5,431 souls. Then, we can go and speak to the Worshipper of God. When you have 20 faith, she'll grant you two more Stones of Ephemeral Eyes. Finally, speaking to the Disciple of God, we can purchase Evacuate, which is a spell that will send you back to the Nexus, similar to the Homeward spell in Demon Souls. If you still have souls left over, I'd recommend putting them into either Strength or Dexterity to get some more damage off the scaling of your halberd. Now, we'll go back into the Boletarian Palace. Here, we're going to purposely die so that we can force our world tendency to be lower. Right now, World 1's tendency is slightly white, because we killed the area boss. By losing our human form, we switch it back to being neutral. Now, we'll use a Stone of Ephemeral Eye in the Nexus, then go back into the world again and purposely die. After this one, we already have access to the Gallows area, which leads to Executioner Meralda. However, we absolutely do not want to kill her, as doing so shifts our world tendency back toward neutral again. From here, we're just going to keep reviving in the Nexus and dying in Boletarian Palace until we make our world tendency as black as we can. This has a number of effects, including making rarer items more common, but more importantly, it also makes it so that we can get more souls from enemies. We're still not quite ready just yet though. Another effect is that enemies become more difficult to kill, so we need to stack odds more in our favor. Let's go back to the Phalanx boss room. If we were to continue into the room up ahead, we'd have a number of hoplites to kill for some upgrade material. But that would put us in the next area, the Lord's Path. That's past our cutoff. Luckily, we can go back into the tower to the right of the fog gate instead and kill the three hoplites there. This is one of the reasons why we picked the halberd. It upgrades using hardstone, and these hoplites drop both regular and large shards of hardstone. By farming drops from these hoplites, for 
two hours. Ugh, God. We can upgrade our halberd all the way up to plus six without ever having left the first level of the game. It's crazy, right? This is also why I didn't bother keeping track of the souls prior to this point though. There's so much chance that goes into the setup of this that it would be impossible to know how many souls you will have collected prior to this point. Now we've got to establish our farming location. Going up the shortcut tower on the left side of the phalanx boss gate, across the top section, we'll kill the blue-eyed knight. Then, continuing on, we'll kill the red-eyed knight and find that he's now accompanied by two black phantom blue-eyed knights. Killing these will give us the best possible souls yield per attempt versus the amount of time it takes to do an attempt. You'll also want to avoid killing all the dreglings on the way up here, as the amount of time it takes to kill them is not worth the souls you get from them as opposed to simply running past them and going straight to the blue-eyed and red-eyed knights. But how many souls are we getting? At neutral world tendency, the blue-eyed knight gives us 305 souls, and the red-eyed knight gives us 2070. But with pure black world tendency, we now get 458 from the blue-eyed knight and 3105 from the red-eyed knight, with the black phantom blue-eyed knights adding an additional 945 souls each. Let's not forget though, we still have the overkill bonus to consider, and here's the other reason we chose the halberd. I tested every weapon that's possible to have at this point in the game, and out of all of them, the halberd had the best damage from performing a riposte. Throw in stat scaling, and we're able to get the overkill bonus, although it's not easy. For the Black Phantom Blue-Eyed Knights, it takes around 55 strength before we can start getting the overkill bonus, bringing us up to 549 for the Blue-Eyed Knights and 2,268 souls cumulative for the two Black Phantoms. But the Red-Eyed Knight? Boy, this thing's a monster. It takes us all the way until around 99 strength, 75 dexterity before we can get the overkill bonus for this. I say around because it was somewhere between 70 and 75 dexterity, but I don't know exactly where. Frankly, at this point, it took so many souls per level that I wasn't going to keep upgrading them individually to find out what the exact number is. So we'll call it 75 so that it's on the upper limit, okay? Anyway, now the Red-Eyed Knight drops us 3,727 souls per kill. There's also a few Boletaria soldiers we'll want to kill as otherwise they'll chase us to the mausoleum, adding an additional 181 souls, making the total yield per run 6,725. This does complicate things for the math a bit, as there's now a couple of thresholds we need to reach before we can include the overkill bonus. <sighs> Here's the last few considerations. Unlike in Dark Souls, we don't have infinite healing via the Estus Flask. Luckily, at pure black world tendency, enemies are not lacking in health drops, so this isn't really an issue. Also, since we have access to the Gallows, we can always kill the Black Phantom Draglings over here to get some guaranteed grass. Our equipment is also going to be degrading over time, but luckily we have Baldwin in the Nexus to repair our equipment with, which we can certainly always afford. Finally, we don't have infinite item weight like we do in Dark Souls, but of course, Stockpile Thomas is always available to take our excess items. Alright, that's everything. Let's time a run now. Starting in the Nexus, we'll run over to the Archstone and select the Phalanx boss room as it's a bit closer than the start of the Boletarian Palace, since you can avoid going over the bridge. I'm cutting out loading times here because that can vary depending on a number of factors. From here, we'll run back toward the entrance, up the shortcut, across the roof, and kill the Blue-Eyed Knight. Then the four Boletarian soldiers, and from there we simply run over to the Red-Eyed Knight and kill him with a riposte, then kill the two Black Phantoms, then, using our talisman, we use Evacuate to spawn back at the Nexus, with a time of 1.52. So, as always, now we just have to do the math. Bear in mind, I'm going to be doing some rounding with the figures, so if anything seems a little off, it's because I'm rounding up. 1,683,684,114 souls. 
Minus the 5,431 souls we collected near the start of the run to get to 20 faith, we now have 1,683,678,683 souls. We need to make another 285,778 souls to get the overkill bonus on the Black Phantom Blue-Eyed Knights. At this point, we have a yield of 4,725 souls per run, meaning it will take us 61 runs to get the souls we need. It takes us 1 minute 52 seconds per run, so it will take us a total of 1.9 hours. Now, we need to grind until we get the overkill bonus on the Red-Eyed Knight. To do that, we'll need 5,280,996 souls. 6,652 per run means 794 attempts at a minute 52 each. That will take us a total of 24.8 hours. Okay, we're at our maximum souls yield. To max out our character, we now need the final 1,678,111,909 souls. 6,727 per run, that's 249,460 runs. God. That will take us a total of 7,761 hours to finish off the run. So, 1.9 hours to get the overkill bonus on the Black Phantoms and Blue-Eyed Knight, plus 24.8 to get the overkill bonus on the Red-Eyed Knight, plus 7,761 to finish the run. That brings us to 7,788 hours. That's 325 days, 10.7 months, or a little under a year at just 0.89. That's surprisingly not too bad, all things considered. All that preparation really paid off, damn. Though, of course, this is solid gameplay, not leaving time to do anything else. As usual, if we divide that by 0.33 to see how long it would take if we dedicated 8 hours per day to this grind, that will bring us all the way up to 23,600 hours, or around 2.7 years. It's finally done. I hope you enjoyed this video. In case you didn't know, I've already done similar videos for the first three Dark Souls games. Click the card above to check out the Dark Souls 1 video. God, I hope I didn't screw anything up. There were a lot more numbers being thrown around this time. Ugh. <laughs> As always, I'd like to thank Grind God for inspiring me to do this series. Aria, for the modded footage in the tutorial section, and of course the actual mod for getting into the Pantheon, and Illusory Wall for the remake footage. Be sure to check out all of these people by checking the description. I don't have much of anything else to say, so I'll see you in whatever I do next.